Warning! This game was made for Ludumdari 33 and therefore contains content that was put together in an intoxicated, sleep-deprived state. What is about to come may be inappropriate for young children or big babies. sat on a park bench with their bodies touching each other, holding hands in the moonlight. There was silence between them, so profound was their love for each other, they needed no words to express it. And so they sat in silence on a park bench with their bodies touching, holding hands in the moonlight. Finally she spoke. Do you love me, John? She asked. I love you, darling, he replied. I love you more than Tug can tell. You are the light of my life, my son, moon, and stars. You are my everything. Without you I have no reason for being. So that was a very weird game called Lovers on a Park Bench, which was done for the Little Dare 33 with the theme, You Are the Monster. Kind of, sort of see where the theme fits into this, as in you're given the ability to kill someone at some point through a lover's tip spite thing. I don't know, it's a bit weird. But it's in my best of Little Dare because, I don't know, it's just fucking weird. And it has, like, incredibly strenuous Stephen Hawking type voice going, John! Which is, in, in itself, just hilarious. So, 
that's Lovers on a Park Bench. I didn't want to introduce this one because I just thought it spoke for itself. Um, so we'll go on to the next one. I'll just leave this one as is, put it down on a plate in front of you and say, eh, that's, that's the thing. So the next game up is a game called Hue and Cry by Jez O.R. Uh, an action and puzzle platformer with dark themes, children may not understand it, and non-British people might not get some of the references. I'll wait on a holiday for a week now, post-mortem when I get back. Okay, that's not actually describing the game, but fuck it, it was on the description, so I read it out. I am, yeah, just reading off an auto queue. Let's actually play the game, shall we? Made with Game Maker Studio. It recommends playing with a controller, I believe that's what that means. Um, turn the volume down slightly. So... This is the best music ever. But it's not, the music isn't why we're playing this game. It is because... A local man is accused of murder. And that's you, apparently. Something about a knife sharpening party at his house. So now you have to get to your sister's house. And this is kind of why we're playing this, is because I, I like this graphics. I like the graphics. I like this the atmosphere. It's fairly, fairly, fairly cool. And when it says an action puzzle platform, it's not really. It's just a platformer and you have to avoid stuff. So on every map there is an ASCO which if you're not British is a portmanteau of Asda and Tesco and there is a Tesco on every street corner in Britain. Ow, that hurt. And this guy chases you and you have to press control to run and sometimes when you press space he doesn't jump in time and sometimes when you press control he doesn't actually run either but that's... See, better trial and error and the, the enemies sort of blindly fall off the edge and we're heading towards the north. And if anyone's been to the UK, they'll know that the motorway always, M6, always has the north, pointing north, funnily enough, um, and stops when you get to the north. So this is the puzzle bit, is you have to figure out that you have to jump up onto here. As you can see, there's an, as like I said, there's an ASCO in every map, and it's always raining, and there are massive potholes, which, you know, Austerity and that means we can't fix them, and if you fall in them, you fall to your death. And this is the hardest level in the game. You jump over this, jump up here, and then you have to be lucky enough. Ah! To be lucky enough to be able to make this guy jump into the, into the ground. So, this is just an image of Cameron's Britain right here. Uh, a guy cowering on top of a bin being judged silently by two Daily Mail readers. That is that is Britain in a nutshell right now. I'm getting message to ignore that that was part of the game. Also, invasion of personal space. Brit Brit Brits can't handle the invasion of personal space. So just being close to someone means that you fall over and die. There we go. So made him fall off. And now you Fuck! I can't even make the simple jump in this. Damn it. It's also not entirely um, consistent, the jump. So now I'll do this. Ah, oh, I didn't fall in that thing. So we run over here, we make her come over here as far as possible so that when we do a jump over here. Ah, oh, I didn't fall in that thing. See, this isn't really a puzzle as it is more. Trial and error, really frustrating. But I, I love the fact that people are shouting pedo and murderer and are just generally treating you with hate. And you're a guy with a comb over and glasses. Oh, just fall in, you little shite! You did it last time. You can do it again. Jeez, oh. And then of course that happens. I really should turn that off. There we go. Turn off. Ow! And similar thing here again. 
Oh no, this is the hardest level in the game because it's exactly the same as before, but there's someone else over that side you have to make fall into the into the thing as well. And now we're here. There's a massive pit outside their front door. Um, it does look like a big building, so you would think that maybe they would fill in the potholes pot outside the, the, more, the more expensive looking buildings, because they'd have to pay for it. But really that's just because they're hiding in the house from all of the, the pedophiles and immigrants who are invading the country, and they've built a giant moat around their house to, to keep those riffraff out. So you have to jump over on their, their roof and then make that woman down there fall into the, into the pit. And now we get into the, now we get into the, you're just dead mate, levels. So you have to crouch, you have being shot at, and sometimes when you, sometimes when you run, you don't, you don't, you don't jump when you're running. Like that. Sometimes you don't, you just don't run when you have, when you have crouch held. And over the top. So this one you have to jump up like that. And now you're just this house. And oh, you've killed a bunch of people getting up here. Oh no, you're a monster. So that was you and cry. I like that one. I as you can probably tell from my commentary over it, I'm sarcastic when it comes to British culture and um, yeah I just wanted to play this on record and take the piss out of Britain anyway next game the next game up is a game called Ladybug by Dick Paul po Dick Paul Len it's a lovely name your mother must be very proud anyway Ladybug is a simple game about a bug lady who just wants to kill everybody now, that description and name is not indicative at all of what this game is actually about, so let's fire it up and we'll show you what Bud is about. So, there's simple controls S is start, Q is quit. <laughs> so, X is jump, which is a weird choice. And you run out of people and you kill them. You walk in walls using Z. Can you see where this game is going? Can you see why this game is part of Crouch Jump? Oh, X is cr X is technically crouch. Aha! Okay, I didn't play this level. I played the first two, and I was like, "Yes, this is the game I want to play." So, ah, oh, motherfucker! This is one of the problems I have with the game is that these guys seem to be a little bit random, and they're very, very the the reactions are lightning fast. And also. X and Z is the as as stick and jump are really not very intuitive controls. But there is a lot of potential in that Oh, see this? This is gonna be annoying. Ah. Okay. Press the jump button. Or did I let go? I can't remember. I did something that was stupid anyway. See like instant, instant kill. Like there's no But not always. See this is this is the confusing thing about this game is that it's not always an instant kill. And, and it 
it doesn't always do what you tell it to. Although the, the controls, when you are sticking to it, they are tight. Like, <laughs> why? Why does it work sometimes and not all the time? <laughs> I fired incredibly quickly. Okay, that'll work that time. When you do, when you, the thing is, when you do get it, it feels great. But it's just not consistent enough. It's not like Hotline Miami, where like, everything you do, you can predict what the other guy's gonna do, because they'll always do the same thing in the same situation. Um, and it's always like, you could batter the door and they'll always shoot you at a certain point in time. You can, you can just tune in and fine tune in what you're going to do. And this, it's just far too random. Anyway, next level. It's still enjoyable as fuck. Uh, camera? Camera, please? Like, that's bullshit. Like, that, that is just total bullshit. I'm getting closer. The guy in the right shot me too, fuck you. Oh, fuck. See, this is, this is like, this is probably one of my most fav actual favourite games that I've played this time. Just because it's so fucking frantic. It's the kind of, it's the kind of Twitch gameplay that I like, but it's just, it's just keeping, it, keeping the thing consistent that would be... Who shot me there? It, it does have very Hotline Miami vibe to it. Um, and we'll stop. I'll try and complete this level and then I'll, I'll go on to the next game, but it's, it is quite addicting. That was my fault. See, it's not it's just not consistent. Like those guys shoot far too quickly. It does seem to be slightly random as to, to when as to, as to when they'll shoot you. Like if there was just a little bit more delay between them spotting you and them shooting at you, it would mean that drops like that would be a lot more satisfying. Like how did I do this before? How did I do this before? I don't know how I did this before. This is getting out of hand. Deadly, the, the shots are being really deadly, right? Let's try actually let's go down this way and do it. Okay, now 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 the camera's just bullshit. That's just bullshit camera. And I'm stuck on this guy again. Okay, I stuck to the wall that time. He didn't even shoot at me. And he didn't even shoot at me, he shot way away from me. Thanks, camera. Like, that time he shot right at me, but like... Yeah, okay. I think... Yeah. Let's, let, let's, let's get out of this game. I mean... I like it. It's good fun. It's got a lot of fucking potential. It's just incredibly hard. A little bit, little bit of delay. A little bit, like even if this is like twenty, tw uh, quarter of a second between them spotting you and shooting you, make this, make the shooting more consistent. This will, this will 
surpass this will be the hotline Miami of Super Meat Boy clones sort of thing. This would be fantastic. Uh, anyway, that was Ladybug. On to the next one. Okay, the next game is a game called Eye of the Basilisk. And it's currently very loud in my ears. One second. Turn the sound down a bit on that. Uh, yes, so, you are Baldric, a young basilisk, living in the basement of Hogwarts. Destroy those pesky magicians with your laser death there by making eye contact. Eat mice to regenerate health. This is a very simple game. But it's instantly cute and it has a laser, laser death snake. You have to make eye contact with them. You can't just look at them, they have to look at you back, so... Well, that's one problem with the game is that if they spawn on you, you get a lot of health taken off you. Ha ha ha! See, that, that one spawned on me. And it's just a fun little game. See, there, there's a ride. Ha ha! I got you in the corner. Oh, yeah. So. This is, it's just, it's just, I love the art, I love the cute little art style, I love the idea, it's an incredibly simple idea, it's well executed, it fits the theme of the jam really well, and it's got some decent music, I mean this is fairly bouncy, and fairly retro, and I like this game, ah, except, except bugs like that, I don't know why you kept moving down, I wasn't pushing down, uh, but that was the last of my my, my picks for today. Um, I rated 50 odd games today, I think 55 played and rated. Uh, lucky I had to be off. Um, and these four were the best games. Well actually no, the best game of course was the one that I made because I entered, um, which is why I'm rating them. So, just as a little bit of an ego boost, I'm gonna play my game at the end of this video, right now. Um, it's it's obviously... I'm not an artist. I'm a programmer. Um, so, don't laugh when you see it. But... The music's great, but it's repetitive. But, yeah, so I'm going to show you my game in just a second. And it's going to be excellent. You're not going to vote this video down for me being egotistical. You're not going to, you're going to write anything in the comments about it. You're going to leave me alone because don't put you don't put things on the internet to be critiqued. You just you just you just put them there in order to stroke your own ego. You get, you get, you um, yeah, as I said, I'm not an artist. This will be hilarious in several ways. Also, the the actual monster sprite that I drew, I drew it at three a.m. So yeah, let's get let's get on let's get on with it. Kaiju a go go. And yes, that that sprite was indeed. So this is my game that I spent the last two days working on. The the first thing I, I drew was the monster sprite. Um, I mean, it's got a total of four frames of animation, so you know it's good. Uh, so yeah, the, 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 I'll, I'll read the description I wrote. So there's a giant monster attacking the city, and the monster is you. Guide the poorly drawn kaiju monster through a gauntlet of tanks, planes, bombers to escape the city. Use your breath attack or crush enemies underfoot with your mighty stomp. Featuring Poorly drawn monsters with four frames of animation, 110 seconds of music, fonts, pixel explosions, and untested Mac and Linux builds. Um, the build that I tested with was this build, the uh, Unity Player build. There is also the Web uh, the the WebGL build, which I've tested, and some things don't work because it's WebGL and Unity WebGL sucks. And there's the Windows version, which I've tested, which was runs okay. Anyway, can you Google? We can listen to this eight second loop of music for longer enough, it'll, it'll eventually just drown out into the background. Anyway, here we go. So you control him with the, the arrow keys, and you can jump, and he's got a great jump animation. It's just a still of one of his idle animations. And you use your fire breath to shoot the tanks. Tanks take three hits with the laser breath. Or 
if you want. You don't have to use laser breath on them at all. You can stop them. And you're also done. So remember, I have built this game, so I know how it works. The best way to take planes out of the air, especially these low flying ones, is to shoot them with a crouch. See? Shoot them with a the crouch. I think it gave you too much health though, but you can also stomp planes out of the sky. You can't shoot down the bombers, you just have to avoid the bomber. Lots of tanks. I'm doing well because I know what's coming. The thing is, taking out one side of the tanks means that you're going to let these guys get a shut off, but you can jump over most of them. And we should already be on the final boss. Best way to fight a boss, try to shoot the fucker. When he does that, jump over it. Those are homing missiles. Low homing missiles will attack your mid, mid, mid section. The red ones will attack your head, so if you duck, they won't attack you. They will never hit you. Because, you know, that's how you build a boss fight, don't you? You make it so you can just stand in one corner and fire uh, with impunity at them until it blows up in a massive explosion. You also build a boss fight with one last ditch attack, which you can jump over and duck under. Guess I've pretty much perfected winning this game, which is why I gave you a giant health pool so that you could just play your way through it. And the final cutscene, which is also poorly drawn. Celebrate with a drink of lemonade. That's the best sprite I have ever drawn, is that guy with the binoculars. Because even at the reflection. And oh, there's an egg left. I did not totally rip that off of Godzilla from the mid 2000s. So that was my game, that's Kaiju Go. They're by far not the best game in the game jam at the moment. Um, to be honest, I would probably say that Ladybug is the best game I've played so far in the game jam. It needs more, it's just, it's so much potential to actually be a commercial game. Um, it just, I just, I just think it's very good. Uh, but the other games, Lovers on a Park Bench is obviously one of those, it's just got so much going for it, but like, that's, it's just a very silly game. Um, the other ones that we had, which Hue and Cry was just funny because I'm British and it just appealed to my sense of humour and we had Eye of the Basilisk, which was just a very simple, very silly, quick um, action game. But yeah, Ladybug is definitely my pick so far. I've been Big Dave, and until next time, go play some games.